Hello guys, hope you're all okay today. So, quick video today and it's going to be all about basic miniatures. Now, loads and loads of videos out there for how to do it. So I just want to say a couple of things before we get started. The first thing is, when, when I'm basing miniatures, if there's any techniques that I find out online or things like that, I always like to put a name to, to the people who've done it so I'm not making it as if I've um, created it myself. Uh, a prime example would be um, cork, using corks as rocks. I found that out from watching the Dark Artisan, um, Harry from um, Dark Artisan. Um, and, you know, I've used that now and again. It's absolutely fantastic, but I like that from him. Maybe Harry like from someone else. Maybe he created it himself. I don't know. Um, but if I pick up a technique, whether it's from painting, dungeon mastering, anything, um, you know, I won't claim it as my own. I'll, I'll say specifically online uh, on the channel that uh, where, where I've got it from or that I got it from someone else. The second thing is, as I always say, um, I'm not trying to teach professionals how to suck eggs. I've been lucky recently. I've had some lovely, lovely posts and private messages of people saying that um, I've inspired them to either start taking up the hobby um, of, you know, just figure painting and collecting or uh, pick up the brushes again. Uh, and that really means a lot to me, that. Um, so it's more aimed at people who are maybe starting out afresh or maybe they just want to put a spin on things. And the reason I'm doing this today is because I've learned a few things myself, basically. So I'll tell you what I mean by that. So here's a base I'm using at the minute. I'm getting ready for my wife's um, Sylvanath army, right? So rocks on it, flock, uh, flowers, the works, right? Put a miniature on that. I think it'll look pretty decent. Two pence coin, and what I did was I used no more nails, waiting, waiting for it to harden, and um, basically, well, sort of start to harden, and then basically shaped it with the Stanley knife so that eventually that'll be painted over uh, in brown like um, floor tiles, and that'll be for and this lady when she's painted up, she'll go on there, and it's basically going to be a woman sweeping the floor of, a, of an inn or something like that. My friend Martin, my best friend Martin, he taught me about using um, no more nails and putting shapes in and things like that. So they obviously didn't come from me, uh, my friend. Well, he told me about it anyway, and I, I just practiced it myself. Um, and But then what I've been doing lately, which I talked about in one of my videos, is I've been um, basing up some of the whiz kids and... Uh, Wizards of the Course and Pathfinder miniatures because because they come as standard. So there's a, a standard Winter Wolf black base, which is fine. Um, but because I want them to tie in more with um, my normal miniatures, I've started basing them for putting them on the table for Dungeons and Dragons and such. So I'll show you two versions. So there would just be um, a, a standard one that I'm going to do for lots of rank and filers and things like that. And this one, because I haven't got many, um, I think they're dire wolves, or oh, vampire dire wolf. That one, uh, that's a little bit, a little bit more put to it. So it's got like shapes with the grass, uh, rocks put in there, like larger rocks as well as like, scatter, scatterings of rock. Um, so there's two like little techniques, and those are super super fast, especially. The likes of this because what I do for this and this is what I, what I wanted to show you on today's video because I've only just done this recently myself is what I did was I created um, a mixture and it's about 50 50 I would say of um, flock and I got a flock which had added like a mixture it came like that so I'd look like little flowers in it and things like that I can just show you there, you can see the little yellow bits in it. Um, and it's basically a mixture of um, that and mixed fine and um, coarser grained sand and rock. Um, and sometimes you might put your, put your um, spoon in wherever you're getting and you get a lot of fine. And all you have to do for that, guys, is just shake it 
shake it and if you see there you get a lot of the the heavy rock comes to the top um so that's easy to just get get the right consistency so in reality you want a third like fine rock a third coarse rock and a third of the flock and then it's literally a case of either using like something like no more nails or if you want to raise it a little bit you could use filler um whatever you want to put down for your base that you know is going to harden and grip to the to the flock or in my case i use a uh, pva glowing on to, on most cases and then basically just get a spoon uh, there's my spoon i use you just get your spoon make sure it's it's mixed together and then just grab it and then what i do is i have the, the miniature over the board and i just tilt the miniature pour the pour the, the flock down pick it up again pour it down until i've got a good consistency over the whole of the base and then as you say let that dry if it's if it's something like no more nails you're probably going to need a 24-hour period um but you could either just as i say leave it like that um, and i think that's fine for to be honest with you if i was trying to bang out an army really fast uh, um that would probably would probably go with something like that um rather than putting rock down then a bit of grass flock down and then this that and the other i would probably go with something like that and then break up something like a bit of uh a bit of flint or some, something like that and um a bit of tile or something and just put a few segments on up and then get something like uh, one some of the army painted grasses or something put one of them down which is exactly what i did for my goblin army um and they're good to go then and a base I, I never used to be too interested in bases but i really do find that a base can make a character even a basic character really stand out um so i'm i'm all about the base um so yeah the other thing i was going to talk about was with basing so there's different types for me so my friend martin again he, he managed to get me some of these some of the thicker um i think it's compressed cardboard um bases and i'm doing a null army at the minute so he's going to go on there like that so what i'll do is i'll which is what martin does again he um he no more nails nails it and he squashes the miniature in and then spreads the no more nails over this actual of the actual base that it comes with and um, because these are terrible you put them on these and they just fall over so you put them on a bigger base squashes it in and then just puts um a load of rocks and things like that puts, puts that on squashes it in with the the uh, the no more nails leaves it for 24 hours to dry and then he bases the, the the whole model in a black or whatever and then just dry brushes the the base um with like various grades of gray to bring it up to a rock or whatever color rock he's using and then flocks it with grass might put a bigger rock on afterwards or whatever um so that's what i'll be doing with um with these with these guys the other knolls I've got um, are the plastics, as I say, just plastic standard Wizards of the Coast knolls, nothing great. Um, I won't be touching them up with a paint job or anything because they're just, you know, these are just standard soldiers that you're going to pick up, put them down there. Um, they're just there to add the numbers to the board. They're not named characters that you want to bring out a little bit with a, a decent paint job. Um, so they'll probably just get uh, the PVA glue and then they'll just get, as I say, a mix of that and um, and then maybe put a, a bit of like, say, one of the army painters static tufts or something like that. Um, so there's that. And the other thing I wanted to mention is with these plastics as well it's not so much basin but if you are a bit worried about um painting miniatures and things try and get some of these guys because what i love doing with these so 
you've got a grey wool there and I don't think it's a bad a bad paint job to say it's plastic right eyes are painted in teeth right but you've got a base there now I'm I'm making this as a as a, almost like an amateur uh, uh, like a adolescent sorry um, winter wolf a young winter wolf so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be dry brushing this up to a, a whitey grey and it's a great benchmark well you know if you've seen this since say you've seen this miniature here you'd have to take all the all the um the mold lines off then you'd have to put your base coat on um, and then you're going to have to pick a colour then you're going to have to find a, another colour that will sort of highlight up from it maybe a third highlight colour and to a new um, person coming new into the craft it could be a bit daunting but if you get these what you've got which is a great um, tool for you is you've got a base coat set in already and you can paint straight over these guys you don't need to reprime or anything like that can just get your flock down and because you're not too worried about anything you can probably put the flock down either before or after it's not really an issue I've had no issue painting before or after with any of these models um, and then it's just I'd prob I'd, with this I'll probably do it before because um, I'll probably use some heavy dry brushing first and then I'll, I'll use some finer dry brushing after just to get the um, pick up all this fair here which, which has got texture to it and then it'll just be if I've gone over the eyes to heavy or something I'll redo the eyes, redo the teeth, base it, it'll take 20 minutes maybe, maybe that, half an hour at the most but one of the other reasons I wanted to bring this up was for me I've been painting on and off for a very long time as I've said in previous videos and I found this a real, a real like boom learning this and not so much learning it but having less of a care if that makes sense and not being too concerned about oh I don't want to ruin my lovely models that I spent, uh, spent lots of money on from GW and things like that I sometimes get too apprehensive because I don't uh, I, I doubt my um, abilities and I think most painters doubt their abilities um, until they, they you know, probably get to the layering stage and such um, well I, I certainly do anyway um, and with these uh, with, do, with doing these and basing these and painting some of these up it's made me realise that you can get pretty much as good an effect from just banging out simple techniques such as um, using like a heavy dry brush um, prime example this is one, going to be one of my named characters. Uh, they're one of two guards in the Null Army, right? And this will, I will literally, I might not use that, but I will probably use that to get, I'll, I'll base it black, it'll go on one of these boards, get base and everything, and then I'll just I'll just put its base coat down as black and I will literally heavy dry brush most of the model. I won't be bothered whether I get it on the sword it, it, and any of the flat areas I'll just I'll just go over heavier and heavier with the with the um with the dry brush. I'll i load almost load the brush up um because the dry brushes are great applicators for getting paint on as well. The really if you're heavy enough with it they'll really get into all the recessed areas as well. So, from doing the basin and then doing a little bit of dry brushing and just quickly painting miniatures, it's given me more confidence to go out um, and do something like a Stormcast Army. I'm super confident for painting my son's Stormcast Army because I know exactly the technique I'm going to use. It's going to consist of um, putting a base coat down and then putting a basically using. A layering technique using uh, let's have a look if I can find it there you go so I'm gonna have to find the equivalent of tin bits for the, from the Citadel range or I'll maybe use uh, I think it's brassy brass uh, yeah brassy brass from from uh, Vallejo game or something like that um, as a as a base layer and just whacking the lot on 
um, and then waiting for that to dry, going over it with the retributor, but doing that as a lighter dry brush to pick out all the edges, and then washing it in a Ritalin flesh. But before I wash it in a Ritalin flesh, do the uh, retributor armor, and then um, pick out all the red emblems and the things like that, so that when I do my Ritalin flesh wash, I can just wash the whole model. Um, bring up the um, bring up the red pieces, uh, the red patches with uh, the original base color. Maybe give it a third highlight, um, and then just use something like um, a silver or like some. I don't, I don't know exactly which one I will use yet, but some sort of silver to just really pick out the fine raised areas of the armor, but. It'll take absolutely no time at all because it's basically just dry brushing. The whole models are just going to be dry brushed from start to finish um, and a little spot details. And that's come from doing this. Uh, I've got some, whereas I was daunted before, I've got absolute mass confidence in how fast I'm going to be able to get the army out. So these same techniques can be used um, for, for basing as well. So if you watched uh, one of my previous videos that I did just recently, um, you'll have seen the uh, tree scenery I did on the small cog bases. And they're just from, like, I got them from boys, uh, £2, or, what, three or three dollars or something like that it would have been. Um, and you got the bigger ones as well, and that was just the same technique. Uh, you can use no more nails, or you can use polyfiller, get it slapped down. You can either mix in sand and rocks with it first of all, or you can put that on the top. And and then get your tree banged in. And get the trees, like you say, from the garden centres. Um, and find some. I mean, I, I just pick these up off the roadside, guys. Pick them up. I've also got a, a tin, which I have a lot of my stuff in. So just things like... Um, Getting those from the aquarium centres, um, bits of loose um, wood when you're going on walks, just finding bits of wood. All oh, that will look good to put down on a on a on a piece of scenery. Um, different strange rocks as well that you find. You know that might be decent for elven rocks, or bits of loose cork that you can snap up, put on, and layer up as uh, as rocks. But get them down, and then. It's the same thing, it's the same technique of basically, um, I, I get these, the sample pots, and that comes with a, that already comes with a brush, which I've used in the past, um, but you can just as easily stick a big, a large dry brush in there, or even a paintbrush, just a standard paintbrush, um, and you don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about what you're doing really. Let's say, for example, on this, you bang two of these trees down, put a couple of rocks on, you get that in there, and you just you can either put the sand on first and let it dry up, um, and rocks and let it let it harden, or, or um, you can mix it in with the with your mix. Either way, you've got to let it set. But then you don't have to base it. You don't have to like put a base coat down. Just get it in, slap it all on. Say you've got something like um, a piece of slate like that. I end up having it over the edges and everything. It doesn't matter because if you really, um, if it really bothers you, I fill it with uh, the GW sand, uh, GW snow on the edges, and I dry brush the edges of the rock just to make them have that sort of like cold effect. But if you're not doing, if you're not doing the snow, you can just um, do a brown or whatever. Get a brown in, get a green in, just bang it all on, like. Um, Dapple it about to get different texture to it. It'll mix in with the sand and just go to work. Um, that's what I've learned from it mainly is don't worry about things. Don't be well, like I, in, in the past. I would have been like this. Oh, I don't want to touch the edge of the rock. Get it slapped on. Get it slapped on if need be. You can just dull that down with a wash, or you can find a similar colour and 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 bring the the rock up. You know, layer the rock. It's not a problem. So anyway guys, I just thought I'd do this video because it, it really has changed my game so much. It, it's going to speed up my painting beyond measure. 
Um, and if it can help me, I want it to help you guys as well. So I hope that helps for anyone who's um, worried about bass and miniatures or anything. And um, I'll see you next time, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.